Every artist wants and needs fans. And in the case of today's video, we're gonna call them fiends. And I know that has a negative connotation, but just rock with me on this. We're gonna need a great product to make this thing work. We're gonna need a targeted audience for that product. And we're also gonna need great product packaging and presentation. Problem is it takes guidance to mold the mindset of the artist into one who's focused on product creation and sales. And I know a lot of artists get insulted when you compare their musical creations to actual products. I understand this, but the truth is every product has to be created, right? And the other question is this, in order to keep this operation going, we need the cash to make it run, right? So therefore we have fans who want our stuff, who we're gonna call fiends today, and we have product, which we're gonna call dopamine, AKA audio dopamine, AKA musical crack, because that's gonna keep the fans coming back. And we're gonna talk about it right here on the Music Money Makeover Show. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Music Money Makeover Show. My name is Casey Graham, let's hop right in. First things first, we gotta start at what dopamine actually is. Dopamine is a chemical messenger, AKA a neurotransmitter that works in the brain. It helps nerve cells send messages to each other. It's produced by cells deep in the brain and acts on cells in other parts of the brain. Now, dopamine can be produced within the brain itself through natural activities, but when we bring in outside sources of it, this is when we can kick things up a notch. So check it out. What is the role of dopamine? Dopamine acts on areas of the brain to give you feelings of pleasure, satisfaction, and motivation. Sounds Sounds kind of like music to me. Dopamine also has a role to play in controlling memory, mood, sleep, learning, concentration, movement, and other body functions. Kind of like um, in the movie, they cloned Tyrone when they kept, you know, having the stuff in the chicken and in the perm and all of that stuff. So when you feel good, for example, when you achieve something or do something fun, it's because you have an increase of dopamine in the brain. Sometimes you may want to feel more of this dopamine reward, which is how dopamine creates addiction. So the good feeling that dopamine gives you after pleasant experiences, including eating nice food, having sex, winning a game, and earning money can also happen after listening to dope music, okay? So in addition, you continue to listen to the same songs in the same scenarios to try to get the feeling again. Now, music equals your product. Here we go, artists. I know you don't like this, but stick it out. Every artist must understand that music is a product. The quicker this is realized, the quicker we can get down to business. Now, intellectual property is the product. That's what you're creating from your brain. So it is on the artist to craft and create the sweetest sound or most high energy giving music to the listener to keep them wanting more. Understanding this will give you more reason to take your time crafting better audio dopamine. OK, now target your emotions, define your dopamine. Define three emotions you want your album, EP, or single to trigger and stay focused on these emotions. Too many emotions on one project will confuse the listener or make them discard your project. Defining the target emotion will target who your listener is by default. So a lot of times when you all are going through something, you might have sad emotions, all right? And But this you create some great product off of it. You create some great audio dope off of it. And it may go viral or the fans begin to share it at a steady pace. This will become what you're known for. And then anybody who comes along after that will always say, huh, this artist knows how to really target those emotions. We want more of that. We want you to create more audio dopamine that sounds like sadness. Or if you have an agenda, hint, hint, then you can produce that. But. What I'm saying is for artists, be careful of how you choose your words and your emotions that you target in your music if you want to be known for that, because you could grow out of that and become happy. And then everybody's like, no, we don't want the happy stuff. We want the sad stuff because that was dope. No pun intended, pun intended. Now, crafting good audio dopamine. Good product is made great prior to the recording. For example, if you can sing a melody and the lyrics move you without music, you have great lyrical elements for great audio dope. Now, second, for the producers, the music starts with great sounds first. The last savior for good audio dope is how the final elements are recorded and or mixed. One rule of thumb in this aspect is the more space a song has for the brain to process the mixture of sounds with persuading lyrics up front in the mix, the better chances you'll have of having a winner on your hands most of the time and a hit if you have the cash 
to support it. Go back through that if you need to read it again. Now, I want you to target your fiends or your fans. Define your dopamine again. Targeting the fan base becomes easier once the emotions are revealed in lyric form and the way the lyrics are performed on the record, the actual recording. People will know who you're targeting due to the tone and delivery, and they will also know due to the subject matter. Lastly, the music style will define the audience as well. So this is why it's important to focus on the emotion. I want this project to have this emotion, and then let me work through the lyrics, and then let me work through the music based on those emotions. And sometimes you don't have to define the emotion because it comes out because this is how you're feeling, okay? Now, great product must be packaged well. You can see I have some orange sunshine, which is LSD, and of course I have some blue magic over here, which is heroin, and then I have some clip art. But anyway, it's true. Great dopamine can sell without great packaging. However, we usually find out about these sources of dopamine through slow word of mouth. So if I'm finding out about you through word of mouth through the streets and yo, man, I saw somebody that had this thing called Blue Magic. Yo, I was at a party and there was this little this little pad that had like a sun on it. Like it's like, oh, yeah, that's orange sunshine, man. It's like LSD. OK, cool. But now you're finding out about it because there's an icon involved with it. Great packaging. It's kind of hard to do this digitally, but you can still give a great experience. Now, however, many of us are finding music due to some form of advertisement. So therefore, the presentation and packaging must be as pristine as you can get it for the amount of funding you have. In most cases, great artwork is affordable even when it's expensive. Please don't create your artwork yourself if you can help it, because this ad, that artwork is your calling card once you start to put it on the streets and people begin to see it. Same thing with photos. If you can help it, get a professional photo shoot so people can kind of see who you are and what you're trying to put out there. Packaging must be great, okay? It must be iconic. People must say, I heard about that. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. And that makes people do that. You get what I mean? Now, produce it again. If you did it once, you can do it again and your customer will be expecting you to do it again because they're coming back for more. If it was good the first time, you should be ready for this demand and the unforgiving public. Because if it was good, I'm not gonna, man, I want it again. Give it, give me a great show again. They're unforgiving, the public is always unforgiving. If it wasn't, you might want to get off the block, go back to the drawing board, regroup to let your name cool off, cook up again, repackage and redistribute. You see what I'm saying? So if you put out product that wasn't all that great and you, you take a litmus test, you test the streets, you see what they're giving you, go back to the drawing board really quickly and pull that stuff off the street. You know what I mean? Make it quiet down a little bit and then go at it again. You're gonna say this sounds confusing and it's really not. The only reason it sounds confusing is because you instinctually do this and it's being broken down now via these slides that I'm doing, but you instinctually do this all at one time. And this is what everybody's trying to achieve. Now, what if you don't have great equipment to record and mix? I hear you. For many artists, this is the case in the beginning, but people can hear greatness when it's rough around the edges. However, you must be responsible enough to upgrade your cookhouse with the proceeds of the first run. Start with one piece at a time, and eventually your audio dopamine product will start sounding like a more experienced dealer. OK, so if you can start with the you got the um, you got the uh, the the focus right joint, the sapphire joint or whatever. I, for, I forgot the focus. Anyway, you got the focus right interface and you got the mic that came with the kit. You got some basic monitors and you might be mixing on Pro Tools, but chances are you're probably starting with um, logic or whatever. Do the best that you can with what you have. That's good enough to get you going. People can hear through the rough stuff as long as it's good but it's on you to come back and refine it if the streets test well. How do you handle the demands of the public? Well, realize that this is inevitable. They will demand it if it's good. And if you feel the public response will give you the option to consume with the money that you made more before moving on to the next, like shows, merchandise, and meet and greets, set aside some funds as re-up money for the next project or the next thing, like printing merchandise or getting tour equipment or whatever you need to do. OK, because if the demand is there, cool, and they're going to give you money. But the next step is really going to help with that demand and pressure because it's going to be the foundation to all the cash that's going to come in. So if you're an artist, a producer, a songwriter or a new music business exec who wants to set up the record company 
or the music publishing company in 60 days or less without actually having to search the internet for all the how-tos to do it correctly the first time, I got you covered with something I created called the 60 Day Record Label Course, and this will allow you to build a strong LLC foundation so that it will handle the customer, customer demand that we just talked about. You'll learn how to play the game via contract so you won't be on the block and on the corner just slinging the dope and not understanding the codes to how this thing works. And then ultimately you'll be set up to collect your domestic and international publishing royalties without the middleman taking 15% because we don't want the middleman in our affairs when we're slinging our audio dopamine. Everything that you see in the bottom right hand corner is included within the course. Click the link below to check it out. If this is your first time watching the channel, grab the free stuff below, 10 major steps to increase your record label's profits. A free split sheet is included with that download. Now, if you take the time to craft a great product, it will make a great listener experience for your customer. The experience will cause them to tell others passionately and ultimately creating opportunities for you and putting money in your pocket faster. That's a great product. And, and you can even do that with a good product, not a decent one, but like a good product. But if you have a great product, this is what's happening. But if you shortchange the product, listeners will not log you in their brains and you'll be an afterthought. And this will cost you time and money that you do not have to waste. But ultimately, it tarnishes your brand if you're the artist with a whack audio dopamine product. You put out whack dope to the streets. So we don't wanna do that. We wanna take the time to craft great product. And due to the, st the stipulations that Spotify has just put out about the minimum 1,000 plays on the song, you're gonna wanna craft a better product than something that's gonna yield you know, like 100 plays for the year. We don't want to do that. We got to really build this company, you guys. So I suggest you create a great product on this side. All right, music money makers. So if you were struggling with making great music or making the great product or finding a target audience or targeting the, the customer's emotions, you should be equipped with a little bit more information to make this process a little bit easier for you so you can go out there and be that next great artist that we all need you to be, okay? So if you make music, you should always make money. Log on to musicmoneymakeover.com, jump into the 60 day record label course, book a call there, download the free stuff right down below, and I'll see you next time. Peace.